next flash talk this morning is called Gratitude Doesn't Pay the Bills, Asking for What We Need. Oh, I like that. I know that's right. Uh, in this talk, our next speaker will share the long history of unpaid internships in the U.S. I'm sure so many of us have had that. I myself included, as well as the impact that these unpaid internships have on students. He will also share some of the remarkable change that this or his organization has been able to drive through their work. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Flash Talk featured speaker, the co-founder and executive director of Pay Our Interns, Carlos Mark Vera. Hi everyone, it's really great to be here. Uh, before I start, I just wanted to acknowledge all the Raizado staff, particularly Monica Ramirez, who's known me since I was in college and for giving me this platform. So I want you to picture this. It's February uh, 2012. It's the second week of my unpaid internship in Capitol Hill. And I'm walking down the hallways of Congress. And I soon realized that no one looks like me. It took me a second, because I kind of had to really think about that. And I had two questions. One was, like I said, why does no one look like me? And second, like, why aren't people from my community of Victorville, California, in these places of power? And the answer is, they can't afford to work for free. So we all know that internships are the starting point of a career, our careers, right? Like that's where we learned power skills, you know, how to network, how to dress, how to code switch and really develop those networks that got us our first job. Some of our leaders in this country, including Oprah Winfrey, Rep AOC, and even uh, Vice President Kamala Harris started their careers as interns. Unfortunately, not everyone can intern because it costs money, time, and energy that not everyone can give. Believe it or not, like, it actually costs money to do this, right? Like, it's not free. Someone has to pay for it, and it's usually those that are the most marginalized. In fact, an internship can cost $6,000 when you account for people having to move to LA, DC, New York City, pay for rent, clothing, food, and everything else. And that's important to note because we know that there is a wealth gap in this country between white families and Latinx families. Tenfold is the estimate. So invariably, those that have the most to lose are Latinx students. A new report came out from the National Association of Colleges and Employers, and it showed that Latinx students, less than 8% of them nationwide, will have a paid internship by the time they graduate. That is a tragedy. And that matters because more than 70% of employers nowadays want graduates to have experience, which you get by interning. Now, I'm sure some folks here in the crowd are probably thinking, well, you're not there to get paid, right? Like, you're there for the experience. And absolutely, they are there for the experience, but you're paying bills while you're doing that. Or, like, the back of my shirt, <sighs> experience does not pay the bills. Unfortunately, you cannot pay rent uh, to your landlord with experience. It's just not a form of currency. <laughs> just real talk. Let's talk about the long-lasting implications of this for our community. You don't have to look any further than the demographics of our institutions and earning power. According to recent studies, over 85% of nonprofit CEOs in this country are white, over 86% of all lawyers are white, less than 2% of all elected officials in this country are Latinx. I mean, I can go on and on and on, but you guys get the point. Additionally, 70% of all unpaid interns are women. And we know that there is a gender gap, wage gap. And then there's an additional one between white women and Latina women. So just think about it. If you're a Latina professional just starting out and your pay is $0 an hour, it has lifelong um, impacts in terms of your earning and it hinders our ability to close the racial wealth gap. So because of all of this, and really the moment where I decided I need to do something about this, was when my mentee told me that he skipped out on buying groceries to pay for the dry cleaning costs for his unpaid internship. Right, we all make sacrifices, but no one should have to skip meals or go hungry for these opportunities. So at the age of 22, I quit my job, 
much of the displeasure of my family. And I started pay our interns with less, less than $2,000. Um, I dare to dream a vision of a future where someone's socioeconomic status does not determine what kind of opportunities or careers they can pursue. The whole mission of our organization is how can we create pathways for our communities so that they can enter the workforce with the ultimate goal of diversifying institutions and really ultimately kind of like Dr. Carmen Roja said, shift power. So we decided to start in Congress. And for those that know, it's hard to get much things done in Congress. Uh, and it wasn't much easier for this. When we started this work, people I think kind of actually laughed. Uh, we wouldn't get responses from, from offices and people would just said, well, this is just how it's always been done. But we kept on pushing and one thing we realized very soon was that there was no data on who paid who didn't. It's kind of like diversity numbers. They're just mysteriously never collected or talked about. So we went to all 535 offices, collected that information, and we released a report called, kind of like this, said, experience doesn't pay the bills, why Congress should pay their interns. But we did more than just name and shame. We provided a roadmap, and we said that you should create a line item specifically to compensate interns and fellows. Right, like you need to put your money where your mouth is if you're about creating opportunities. And you may also be thinking like, cause I know some people are not really into politics or policy, specifically for Congress, um, there's only one Latina Senator and only two Latina Chiefs of Staff in the entire Senate, just sit with that. That has long lasting consequences because Interns become staffers, elected officials, and then they're formulating a $2 trillion budget that decides how much funding goes to WIC, SNAP, healthcare, Hispanic serving institutions, and other things like immigration programs. So it directly impacts our communities. We released this report. We named it, like I said, and I remember pitching this to a Spanish publication, and a reporter told me, well, how is this a Latino issue? You know, just to show you sometimes the, the, the barriers that we sometimes face. I'm glad to say that after two years of fighting for this, we actually convinced Republicans and Democrats to come together. And they created a $14 million annual fund to compensate their own interns in 2018. <laughs> and that fund has actually been increased every single year. And I'm proud to say that in under four years, our efforts have resulted in $100 million in wages for paid interns in this country. Soon after that announcement, we started seeing ripple effects across the country. Uh, a trustee at the Met Museum donated $5 million for their own program because, fun fact, they also didn't pay their interns. <laughs> right? Anyways. Uh, they launched their internship program this summer, paid. They got a 200% increase in applications. Their diversity has more than doubled, and they themselves have called it a success. Because fun fact, when you offer paid internships, you get more talent, and it ultimately also benefits you as employer, not just the intern. Now, we're not done there. Uh, about a year and a half ago, two years ago, we set our sights on the State Department and the White House and ultimately really like the largest employer of the country, which is the federal government. I'm proud to say that we teamed up with Rep. Joaquin Castro, who's right here sitting right there. Um, <laughs> on legislation that would ensure that all interns of the State Department were paid. For those that don't know, foreign policy is a very homogeneous per career way. They call it like, is it white, Yale, and pale, or male, something like that. <laughs> Additionally, for the White House, I'm a former unpaid intern there. I saw firsthand the struggles of working for free, but also the immense privilege of having the White House in my resume. In March, we made history again, and Congress set aside $8 million for the State Department Internship Program and $4.5 million for the White House Internship Program. What does that mean, starting actually this month, Interns at the State Department are making $17.50 an hour, and they're eligible for stipends for those that are doing abroad, like in an embassy in Madrid or in Argentina, and travel. And in the White House, they're making 18 bucks an hour. That is real change. <laughs> the, 
That being said, there's so much more work to be done in other sectors beyond government. Because it's a shame that today, if you want to be a journalist, if you want to work at the United Nations, if you want to work at the Department of Justice and have a legal career, or work at a nonprofit that's fighting against poverty or voting restrictions, you're expected to work for free. So a month ago, we announced that we're expanding our focus beyond just government into the other sectors to effectively end unpaid internships by 2030. But we're not doing this alone. There are actually grassroots organizations in each sector fighting to change that. So for us, is how can we make sure that they have the resources and support to create that change? Because right now, it's mostly volunteer-led and extremely under-resourced. We're working with organizations like uh, Payment, for Play, uh, Pay, Payment for Placements. They're an org started at University of Michigan of social work students that are demanding to be paid. I don't know if you all know, but to graduate with your master's social work, you have to do 1,000 hours of field work, which is AKA an unpaid internship, while paying your school about five to $10,000 to work for free. They now have 14 chapters across the country, including in Georgia, California, New York, so on and so forth. But it's not just social work. If you wanna be a teacher, if you wanna be a counselor, basically the entire care economy, which we rely on our society to function, operates on free labor. Think about it, in a time where we have a shortage of teachers or social workers, why are we making it so difficult to enter these pathways? Right, it doesn't make sense. I'll end with this. I have a call to action to everyone. I really do believe that we can transition our intern economy from a rigged, unequal one to an, one that is equitable and that pays. But that's gonna take collective effort. Organizers need the resources. You know, if you're a corporation, if you're a foundation, please step up and increase funding for overhead so that we can make it easier for nonprofits, which are the majority that where the unpaid interests are, to make it sure that they can pay. You know, if you work in an organization that doesn't pay or you're seeing that's not really diverse, speak up. This work is not gonna happen overnight, and we might not even see results today or in a year, but it's worth playing the long game. And I'll just wrap up with this. My little sister, she's studying to be a special education teacher. She goes to Sonoma State. She interviewed for an internship, and then they told her by the end, oh, this is an unpaid one. She was like, I don't know how to say this, but my brother started this organization and I can't really, <laughs> I can't really take this. So she said no, and she turned it down. They emailed her the next day and they offered her $18 an hour for the internship. Yeah. So. It, it really starts with each one of us. Thank you so much.